Hello, fabulous person, Beate Schilett here, the Growth Architect. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show, where we bring you cutting edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. And now back to our guest. Welcome back, everyone. This is Beata Chalet, your host of the Business Growth Architect Show. Today, I am here with a friend and a mastermind buddy, believe it or not, and his name is Dustin Rickman. Dustin, I'm so happy you're here. Beate, super, uh, super pleasure to be here. Can't wait to unpack some strategy with you today. I love it. So, Dustin, for somebody who has never heard of you and, uh, and all the things that you've done already, uh, tell them what do they need to know about you? Uh, so I'm an engineer who helps married couples. I sell meat sticks and I do business coaching is, uh, it's kind of the long and short. So, uh, yeah, so my background, I had an engineering career, did engineering consulting for a long time, had a bunch of side hustles, including some digital information type, uh, online businesses. After I left engineering, I got into a business partnership with uh, a gentleman. We sell craft meat sticks at a company called fire Creek snacks. So that's part of what I do today is really focus on being the CMO of that company. And then the other half of what I do is business coaching at a company called Simple Success Coaching, which is more the emphasis of the mastermind that you and I are in together. Yeah, and and I, I know that everybody thought you were making a joke when you said I sell meat it's steaks. Totally true. <laughs> <laughs> he he does sell meat steaks, and I hear they're really amazing. I mean, I've they heard are. people rave, rave over them. And for those of you who are not watching this on the video but on the audio, uh, Dustin. You're wearing a very specific t-shirt just for me today. It's a bright yellow t-shirt and it says. Stubborn German. It's a, it's a local brewery here. Um, has anyone heard you pronounce my last name? I have very German heritage, not as direct as you, uh, but yeah, uh, you're the only podcast host to ever say my name correctly without being prompted. So I appreciate that. Yes. So, well, you know, you can only imagine what people do with my name. Oh, I bet. That's a whole other story in itself. So let's dive into this. So obviously, as an engineer, a strategy is something that I assume is something that probably is very innate to you. So what is strategy in your world and how do you use it? Absolutely, it is. Um, I always tell people going to engineering school and I have a master's in, in civil engineering and I taught at the university for a while, too. That whole thing to me is just teaching you a process on how to st think strategically through problems. So like you encounter problems and then you back up and you see the, the, you know, the end that you want to have in mind in the current situation and you figure out the pieces in between. So I think of strategy as taking a step back, big picture, thinking about things in a using wisdom and using your experience, right? Rather than just jumping in and trying to be tactical and trying to just do things for um, action sakes. So, to me, strategy is the ability to step back, see the big picture, and think about a step-by-step -step process to approach a problem. I already have a trick question for you. Right. So what, what I found a lot, Dustin, and, and I think you're the perfect person to talk to, uh, talk to about this, who go and say, well, it's the niche, it's the niche, it's the niche. But sometimes when you need a strategy, you actually need to go to 30,000 foot. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell somebody who says, what do you mean, step back, big picture? Am I not supposed to like be really good in a small thing? What do we tell them, Dustin? So, yes, I mean, you, you, you should be, you know, you can specialize, right? But even within a specialty, you need to have a strategy. So I, I think where people, the, the default action for a lot of people is, hey, I need this result. What's like the tactic? What's the tactic? And so to me, that's the distinction here. There's a strategy, which is like the overarching big picture. And then there's the tactics, which are the little actions you're going to take. So a lot of times we'll jump in and we'll try a new tactic to solve a problem or to get a result in our business. But if you lose sight of the strategy, you could just be going down the complete wrong direction because you're not, you're not stepping back enough to see how does that tactic fit, fit into the larger um, goal or the larger outcome that we're trying to get. Does that help answer that? Yeah, I, I think that um, the reason I wanted you to talk about this with me a little bit is because that is so misunderstood in my world. I think about the quote from Steve Jobs, where he says most famously, he's most proud of the things he didn't do. And I believe that it goes into this, uh, this idea of so many people 
don't understand on whether or not this thing, even though it might be lucrative today, but how does this thing fit into, into where I really want to go? And they keep adjusting the course. So yes. you have done this for several businesses. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between course correction and changing a strategy? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the thing I encourage people to do, and we can talk about when they don't do this, right. And we, and we have to course correct in the process, but what I always like to do for my own businesses or any of my coaching clients is to start with laying out a strategy, right? So we'll talk about things like what's a 10 year vision for your life. A three year vision um, is, is really where I like to live uh, personal and business life. It's like, what are your, for you, what, what do you actually want from life, right? And so most people don't ever think, ask that question. They just think about like, do I do a Facebook ad today? You know, but like, you know, what do you want like for your business? How does it serve you in a big, bigger way, in a longer term way? Then we can step back to a one year horizon and talk about goals, outcomes that we want to achieve towards that three year vision. And then the real key for me is we always develop a 90 day uh, plan, a 90 day strategy, right? So what can we tangibly do now to really affect that one year outcome? So that's how I like to think about things because then you're doing things intentionally. So whatever I'm doing this week fits in not only to my 90 day plan and is very measurable at that level, but it also feeds into those one year outcomes or goals that, you know, the revenue number or whatever we're really trying to hit with that. And it fits into my three year vision for my life and what I want this business to do in a big way. So that's, to me, that's how you tie them together. Now, if you don't have that and you find yourself, you know, two years into your business and you're, as, as we were talking in our mastermind, it's nine o'clock at night, your hair's on fire, you're completely stressed out. You've never set a three-year vision to, to, to aim at, right? But now you realize you're off course from what you want. Then that's when you need to step back. And oftentimes you need someone to help you with that. A strategist like yourself, a coach, someone who can stand beside you and say, now look at what you've done. It's not good or bad, but this is where you are. Let's reassess, okay? Like we won now, now we're gonna set our, our new vision and then how do we get off the path we're on onto the path that we wanna be? And you know, obviously the, the specifics of that would, would depend on the, specific, the specifics of the circumstances. But to me, it's always about getting back to a plan. Like no plan executes perfectly ever, but if you never have a plan to start with, you're just it's like random action, right? Like you don't have a target, you'll miss it every time is, is the, the old saying, so. Yeah, I, th I, I love this part. I am also so happy that you say 90 days because that's one of the strategies we recommend to look Great. at strategy as you need a strategy every 90, 90 days. Yep. So if you are growing your business and you suck at lead generation, you should do a lead generation 90 day strategy. If you don't know how to convert, you need to do a 90 day, I got to get better at sales a conversion strategy. And a lot of the masterminds and the programs that you and I participate in and that you and I facilitate are for the same time frame because we understand that it's not one stretch. It's a large strategy that's broken in smaller strategies that all tie back into that overarching strategy that in these smaller strategies and have tactics of things that you actually need to need to be doing. Yep. So now that we successfully confused everybody with uh. the strategy. <laughs> What's your favorite strategy? Because I know that, um, and it was personally, which is why I wanted you on the show. I know you just launched a mastermind and you have this phenomenal idea on a strategy that I really want you to share with the audience. So what is that favorite, sexy, awesome, amazing strategy you're working on right now? Thank you for uh, the, the flattery, but uh, yeah. It's, this, this... It's, right? it's flushing right now, everybody, by the I way. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that grew out of a lot of personal experience. I talked about, I've been involved in many businesses and consulting and this, I didn't really name it and create, you know, the system around it and the framework to be able to teach other people until, you know, more recently, but it's in hindsight, it's something I've been doing my entire adult life. And it's this idea of what I call partnership marketing. And it is, and we can talk, we'll talk about like the specific framework and what we work through, but like in a very broad sense, what is partnership marketing? In general, it is basically leveraging other people's audiences to showcase what you do, what you sell, um, you know, in front of your target audience. So in other words, it's like selling your shit to your target audience without paying for ads or anything else in the process. This came to me most directly in my e-commerce business, Fire Creek Snacks. COVID happened, marketing was messed up, brick and mortar stores were closed in, in the state that we're in. 
And I was like, I got to try something different. So I just reached out to kind of a warm connection, got on this podcast. We had a great conversation and it shocked me. I gave a coupon code at the end. I was like, I sold some snack sticks, you know, to a podcast. And it was very interesting. And then I started having these people reach out and I've developed relationships. And I ultimately ended up just doing this on a regular cadence. And it, we have a seven figure e-commerce business that doesn't use paid ads, which is very contrarian. That's not what people do in e-commerce typically. And we were at, we have paid ads now, but they're an amplifier to, to that base that we built through relationships and storytelling and being out talking to our target audience through podcasting. Um, and then I built my entire coaching business on the same strategy and who I mostly work with now are more B2B service providers. So I'm happy to unpack that, but there's a specific way a version of this for them um, that really, you know, serves that type of audience. But what, the, what I wanted, the reason I said all that to start is this concept, this mindset, this approach can be applied to any business. It can work for local service businesses. It can work for e-commerce. It can work for any business can really use some version of partnership marketing in the sense that I just described it. And I've got a specific strategy for these, you know, B2B service providers. So we can talk about that if you'd like. Yeah. So what I love about that is, um, you know, last year, it's very interesting that you say this because last year that was how I started. When I looked at, I heard about the concept of boring other people's audiences. And I thought it was like the best thing since sliced, sliced yep. bread. I thought, I love talking. I love uh, sharing information with other people. It's easier for me than writing and it's faster. Same. It is a, a medium I personally like because I listen to podcasts and you always, you always have an idea and uh, I'm in LA, so we always stuck in traffic. So what else are you going to do other than listen to podcasts? <laughs> and um, so, but what you are doing is a little bit different than just borrowing other people's audiences. You have an actual strategy and correct me it is kind of like a how do I convert these people into client strategy so so dive into it which part of this should the audience know if they go what can I use a podcast to what convert people yes. into into buying something from me how do we do that Dustin tell us absolutely and and so the old school way of thinking about this, the way I got into it was literally, I'm going to go talk into the ether. I'm going to talk to this audience, this invisible audience, and some portion of them is going to want to buy my stuff. And that's still true. And I've sold meat sticks that way and stuff, but the much more smart and effective strategy around this for most of your audience who are people that, you know, they sell services, they maybe are agencies, marketing agencies, they maybe are coaches or consultants, um, even authors who have, who have a back end though, like who have an offer a fairly high ticket offer in that sense. And that's who I really you know, work with in my mastermind. It's much more targeted and strategic. So we no longer think about which podcast audience do I want to speak to? We think about which podcast host and which podcast um, former guest, I guess is, is a term for this, right? So I look at a show and say, would the host potentially want my services? Maybe, but there's a lot more previous guests, right? So if I can say, look, in the past year, this, this podcast has had 50 people on it. And I can see that like 10 of these people would be prime candidates for the service that I provide. So if I'm an SEO service, you know, search engine optimization, maybe I'm looking for other thought leaders on here who have, who have content, who talk about a specific specialty. And I can tell like, they're not really doing great with SEO. And, when, and I say, I, we're going to talk about how we out, outsource this and have someone else do most of this research and this work. But that's, that's the lens I'm looking at podcasts through is who can I have a warm relationship with as a result of being on this show? I think about it like I create a pond to fish in, right? So are there, are there some fish from this podcast that I could go be in my sales pipeline and talk to them and potentially offer them what I do as a service because it's a great fit. If there is, then I want to go build that pond. And that's, those are the shows I want to talk to. So that's the first and foremost is like, that's why you're on the show. Now there will be um, residual things that happen. People in the audience will also like you and you'll get, you know, referral partners. People will hear you on there. That's all good, but I don't count on that. I count on the ROI from the ability to have potential clients in that direct line of the show. So that's what we teach people. We teach people how to do that, how to be a really good guest, how to have a really strong call to action, how to develop stories that are true, but are personal to you and emotional to where people really tie in and, and they remember you and, and really appreciate what you do. And 
you know, how to really follow up with the host and develop a great relationship there. It's kind of like podcasting 101, whether even if you didn't want to deploy my strategy, these are all things you should really be doing to be a good podcast guest. Kind of the second phase of this is offloading this, which I know is music to your ears, which is, you know, basically we help you find, hire and train a VA who does all the research part. So you give them like the screening criteria, you give them, you know, either the software, the spreadsheets to fill out, but they're going out and figuring out where these prospects live on podcast in podcast land. And then they are filtering through them and bringing them over into your world to be visible. And then the third phase of this, once you've got these visible prospects, is, you know, sales, it's a sales pipeline. Um, so we, you know, leverage that relationship that we have. Hey, Beate, you were on Joe's show. Uh, great episode. I was actually just, I was on there last year. Um, he's a really great guy, isn't he? And like, you've got an immediate warm connection because you, and, and credibility because you share, you know, this authority of having been on the same show. So we just basically teach you how to leverage this work that you've done by being on the podcast to then talk to the appropriate prospects and close, you know, sales for your agency or service or, or whatever you're providing. So yes, that's conversion, right? It's, it's marketing, it's sales, but that middle piece is the part we often miss, and that's the conversion. And we're actually using the podcast as the mechanism for the conversion. And the beautiful thing is, once you've got this set up, you as the thought leader or the business owner, you just get to show up and tell your stories, right? Like you just said, like, I love being interviewed. It's fun. You and I have got to know each other in this medium. And so you're building wonderful relationships along the way, but it's ultimately a conversion mechanism. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And uh, we'll be right back with a lot more from Dustin Rickman about how to use podcasting as a conversion into clients. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for investing in yourself. Thank you for taking the time to learn the strategies that will help you to grow your authority and scale your impact. I am Beate Chalette. I am the growth architect. And just because you're here and you're listening to the show, I have two things that I would like to give you. Number one, for the subscribers to our podcast, we have exclusive bonus content that you can pick up at beatechalette.com forward slash bonus. And my second gift to you is a piece from our Five Star Success Blueprint, our method where we help business owners just like you, experts in their industry, to grow, build, and scale their business to multiple six figures, seven figures, and beyond. And this particular piece is called the Airtight Avatar, and that is our action guide that will help you to identify who your ideal client is in only 15 minutes. You can pick it up at airtightavatar.com. Thank you so much for listening, and now let's get back to the show. And welcome back. Uh, Dustin and I, we're talking about podcasting and guesting on podcasts, but in a completely different way. So Dustin, you just shared with us that you have built this whole strategy, this three-part strategy around how do I maximize my guesting opportunity on a podcast, not just for the audience, what most people think it is, but how to utilize this by targeting a particular type of uh, host that and then you using that into into a strategy so i know you're a family man dustin and i know that you already have other businesses so what's it about for you is it about is it about that you just love building businesses do you want to make an impact you want to feed the world uh, why are you doing what you're doing why do you do so much uh that's a good question my wife would ask the same thing i think uh so i'll, I'll have a little this podcast. Really, I feel like it's three different reasons um, for the three different main businesses. So Engage Marriage was my very first business, disengagemarriage.com. It started off as a blog and it was very much an out, outreach from our marriage ministry. So my wife and I have been involved in marriage ministry for a long time. And I just wanted to bring that online. This is like 2009, kind of the heyday of blogging. It became a business. And as it became a business, we wrote a book and I was doing speaking. Then I really got pulled into digital marketing. So it's only through that seed of ministry that I got into digital marketing. Digital marketing became my ticket out of engineering because I was getting burnt out of my career. So that's why I got into consulting and helping people do marketing in their businesses. That's where I met my business partner for Fire Creek Snacks. And he said, hey, I've got this awesome brand. I'd like to bring it online. And I said, I'm sure I could figure it out. So I worked for him for free and we launched on Shopify and have done really great things since then. That, that, so Engaged Marriage was 
kind of always exists because it's, it's my wife and I's brand. Um, Fire Creek is a saleable asset, right? Like I like it. It's fun, but we are building that with the vision to sell it and have buku bucks and have fun with, have fun with the money. My passion and what I've really discovered in the past several years is this business coaching, this business strategy, hosting masterminds, things like that, um, where I get to impart this really bizarre uh, breadth of knowledge and experience from my own businesses and all the clients I've worked with private, you know, both in engineering and in, in business and entrepreneurship. And I just get jazzed up for that. Like I get so much energy of pouring my experience into an entrepreneur and then watching how that, how that affects them and their family. So ultimately I do like everyone want more freedom and time. And that's what the money is about and ministry, like directly be able to support things that we care about. Um, but these are all different mechanisms, I guess, towards a common goal in the, in the way that my, that my mind thinks about these uh, different businesses that I'm involved in. Would it be fair to say that maybe the ministry that you've been involved, that that is taking that um, sharing opportunity, because that's what ministry is really all about, right? Yeah. You figure something and you want to share it with the world. Would it be fair to say that that is almost like that's where you come from, that's where your heart is. And now you, every time you touch something, you go like, oh, I must share this with, I must share this with the world. <laughs> uh, yes, I think so. I, 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 sharing or service. Um, I have was went through a mastermind with some people and tried to answer the question of what is your purpose, which, you know, that's a loaded question. Um, but the theme that came up for me repeatedly, and since I've dialed into it, continues to come up for me, is this idea of stewardship. So stewards, you know, there's a good steward in a biblical sense, but the idea that those who are given opportunities and those who are given things, not just money, but, you know, time, talent, treasure, like you should do really good things with that and multiply it and, and pour it out in abundance to other people. So yes, I feel very called the service. The application of the service can vary widely, right? Like it could be direct like marriage ministry. It could be donating to a cause or it could be helping people grow their business so that they can have a bigger impact. And that's the part, you know, I'm middle-aged now. I've got uh, my oldest child is 17. So we have three kids. I've been married 20 years. So I'm entering that second half of life. And for me, it's less about the direct income and more about the impact. And so that's where, what it is. It's kind of bottling up all this stuff that I learn and then sharing it. Like you just said, I love to share it with other people, see if it, see how it works for other people, tweak the process and, and that giving, giving forward of something that I've benefited from, I think is where I get the most fulfillment, I guess. Yeah. And, and the reason I talk about these questions on the show is because I want our audience to recognize that, yes, there is a part of where we need to master making money and income and where it's about hustling and getting there. And, you know, when you first make money, yes, you will buy the toys because that's <laughs> just, that's, that's just the fun part. But I do believe that as you said it, as we go further or grow further in life, that there often is a point where you see that other things are becoming important, right? The mindset part, the belief system on whether that's God, spirit, the universe, whatever somebody is comfortable saying, but that connection to a larger purpose is almost critical to feeling successful at a certain part. And I knew you were a good, good, uh, good partner to talk to about this because that's that's where you come from and that's that's what you what you truly believe in so um i do believe that it is important for us to always share that we are here to make money we're here to be successful but we're here to be connected and we're here to help each other and that there is enough for everybody and then when we do find something that is powerful and it helps other people it's also okay to charge money for it it's also okay yeah. to charge a lot of money for it because then they can take that and create their abundance in their own world. So anything do you want to add to that? Uh, no, it was, it's not a question I'm asked often. So I appreciate it. It's a, a little bit of a ramble for me, but it was kind of working through what was coming up uh, for me. But I, yeah, I think you did a really good job summarizing that back. And for sure, yeah, I, that the, the whole, the word ministry, again, is a loaded word because people think it has to be nonprofit, or, you know, whatever. But I feel very, very opposite of that. I feel um, that charging something, charging something that's of great value, you know, a price for that not only rewards the person who's giving such great value, but it makes the person that's receiving it be invested in it. So when you give something away for free or it's really cheap, people just do not 
they cannot emotionally invest in it the same way they can as if they really had to sacrifice in some way and invest in themselves, you know, by being in a program, a mastermind, or you know, whatever it is in, in someone's life. So no, I, I think, uh, I think you did a good job talking about that topic and the idea yeah. of impact and fulfillment uh, being kind of the bigger purpose for all these strategies that we talk about with our businesses. Well, it's always connected. And I want to make sure that, you know, on this particular podcast, even though it's all about strategy, that the listener is very clear that while it is a strategy, it's people who are running the strategy that have that have often a strategy for, for the greater good in mind. And I had a conversation with my brother last week where he is, you know, an insurance uh, insurance salesman who wants to get out of it so bad and into coaching, into life coaching. And then he says to me, well, in this kind of, in, the, in that kind of business, the life coaching kind of business is, well, you can't really sell and ask for money because that's like contradictory to the idea. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so his idea is to like retire and then just do life coaching for free because that's the good thing to do. I, 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 I said that to him and he says, well, you know, we're in Germany and you are not allowed to advertise, you know, these kinds of things. I mean, it's even stricter okay. than, than here. And I said to him, yeah, but you can have people that have, that you have helped talk about how amazing you are. And he says, I didn't know I can do that. So I want to make sure, and that's why I asked you the question. And that's why I want everybody to really take this away that no matter where you are, no matter what kind of business you are in and no matter how helpful it is right i think on the on the meat stick it's like okay i'm hungry you have food that's a transaction so i give you money i take the meat stick i eat it so that's mm -hmm. a transaction but i have a problem i come to you you help me that's not a transaction so right. that's a I'm asking you for help and now you're helping me and that is all supposed to be free but it is the same kind of energy in the transaction in the same kind of value sometimes even more valuable if you help somebody with your ministry, not to get divorced, you probably sell them what a half a million dollars on average. It's a lot of money that way, yeah. And and I should say too, this it's not that there's not a role for charity. And you know, I do scholarships and I do pro bono work at times. And like one of my favorite things to do is to work like in the high school level with entrepreneurship programs. And I'm not, no one's paying me for that, right? Like if anything, I'm soliciting sponsors to help invest in the kids and, and make sure that they have a really good experience. So it's not, but it's very much not, not what your brother's attitude. It's not an either or, right? It could be an and. I need to make a really good living. I want to support my family. I want to have a, a legacy and I want to be able to give to a lot of good causes. You can't do any of that if you're broke. Um, you know, broke people have a really hard time changing the world. People that have money and abundance can do very good things in the world, including when it's appropriate, you know, being charitable and, and giving people um, help that really need it without charging them or charging them at a reduced rate but the, the really slippery slope there is if someone comes to me and they say, I mean, I really need help with my business. I can't pay you anything. I, I will, I, I've done it in the past. I will beat myself up trying to help them. They will do nothing. They'll get no results because they're not invested in it, right? As, as much as they say they want the results, if they're not putting some skin in the game at some level, it's, they're not going to get the results. And I've just been around the block enough, to, <laughs> enough times to see that. And that's why, you know, that, that's why that approach doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, and I, we, we hear this all the time, and I'm sure that everybody who's listening has heard this before. I don't have the money or I don't have the time. Well, you either pay in time or money. So if you if you don't put the money down, it's going to cost you time, and time oftentimes is more much, much more valuable than than money is because you takes a long time to figure things out. Dustin, um, we've, we've learned so much from you. Thank you so much for giving us all this information. So for somebody who now says, I want to learn how to, how to convert my podcast guesting into into hard dollars in the bank so i can make my impact where do we send people what yeah, what do you have come, for us come over to not the meat stick brand you can go there and get meat sticks if you want not the marriage brand but the yes. <laughs> you, can do all, you can do all three but you know if, if for the strategists in your audience people want to grow their business i'd love to uh to talk to them they come to simple success coaching.com my email is dustin d-u-s-t-i-n at simplesuccesscoaching.com. So people can feel free to reach out. They can learn more about, you know, how we work and what a mastermind is. And, and, you know, we do, we do those on a limited basis and we curate the members. So it's not as if anyone who wants to get in can get in, but if someone was really lit up with this idea and they really want an accelerated 
path to that. I mean, that's what I do. That's, that's really what I'm passionate about. But if they're not quite there and they have other questions about partnerships or podcasting, I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in being transparent and helping any way I can. So yeah, feel free to shoot me an email, simple, simple um, If you can spell my name, uh, Dustin Reekman on LinkedIn, I'm pretty active there as well. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here. This was amazing. I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. Just the same. Thanks so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And this is it for today. This is Beata Chalette, the growth architect, the host of the Business Growth Architect Show. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Beat Chalet, the Growth Architect, and goodbye.